Dr. Ewan Cameron was president of the American and Canadian Psychiatric Associations. He ran the Allen Memorial Institute, which was founded in 1943 with funds from the Rockefeller Foundation. Nazi paperclip scientists made their way into the CIA and military-sponsored mind control programs here in the United States and Canada. Some of these scientists were friends of Dr. Cameron. Money for Dr. Cameron's operation came from the CIA and was funneled through the Cornell Society for the Investigation of Human Ecology. The systematic annihilation or depatterning of a subject's mind and memory was accomplished with overdoses of LSD, barbiturate sleep for 65 days at a stretch, and electroshock therapy at 75 times the recommended dosage. Psychic driving the repetition of a recorded message for 24 hours a day programmed the empty mind. The Canadian government settled a class action lawsuit by 250 former patients of Dr. Cameron decades later, but no person or institution has ever been disciplined or punished for these activities. Linda MacDonald was 25 years old in 1963 when Dr. Cameron treated her for mild postpartum depression. She received 102 electroshock therapy treatments, 80 days of drug-induced sleep, and emerged completely depatterned, essentially like a newborn, totally incontinent, unable to state her name or recognize her husband and children. She had to relearn how to drive, cook, read, and use a toilet. Eventually, unlike many of Dr. Cameron's patients, she made a fairly complete recovery. Dr. Cameron was the premier psychiatrist of the 20th century. He had studied Nazi scientists at the Nuremberg trials and later replicated many of their methods and sought their assistance in the race to control the human mind. Dr. Cameron's mind control experiments were one program out of many programs run by the CIA, Navy, Air Force, Army, and others. Although many parallel programs were occurring in the United States, none of them were ever discovered or prosecuted. These programs were run by Dr. Morse Allen, Dr. L. Wilson Green, Dr. Martin T. Orn, Dr. Stephen Aldrich, Dr. James Hamilton, and others. These American and foreign-born programmers were supervised by Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, who was in turn supervised by Richard Helms and the director of the CIA, Alan Dulles. I was tired, I was depressed, my back was hurting, and so he said, to the children's father, why don't you go to Montreal and visit this Dr. Ewan Cameron, this famous man who has all of these accolades, and have an assessment. So we went. My medical file even says that I took my guitar with me. And uh, that was the end of my life. Within three weeks, Dr. Cameron decided to call me an acute schizophrenic and shipped me up to the sleep room. I was in a, a, a coma for 86 days. 86, 86 days of comatose. unbroken sleep. Yeah. Total comatose state. I was, had to be toilet trained. I was a vegetable. I had no identity, I had no memory, I'd never existed in the world before. A, like a baby. Just like a baby that has to be toilet trained. Pictures and I know who that is, who they are, but I don't, remember them as my children at all hmm. I mean I know that they came from my body um, but there's no th that's all I don't know and that's because I was told that hmm. so these are my children I'm stubborn too it got to the point where every time whether it was John Crosby or uh, Raina Titian or then the, the Honorable Kim Campbell it got to be uh, you guys, we're going we're gonna to stay alive. I, and I said that to Brian Mulroney, too. If you think I'm going away, you've got another thing coming. I'm not going to go away. <laughs> I 
finally discovered... Uh, Linda McDonald would hound the federal government for four years before finally, in 1992, Ottawa grudgingly agreed to compensate her and some of Dr. Cameron's other victims, $100,000 each, in exchange for signing away the right to sue the government or the hospital. But it was an ambiguous victory. Ottawa refused to acknowledge any wrongdoing at the Allen, a conclusion backed up by a legal review of what happened there. It was an awful feeling to realize when I found this out that the man whom I had thought cared about what happened to me didn't give a damn. I was a fly, just a fly. 